All right, welcome back once again to FNTV's coverage here at, F at Fiber Connect in Nashville. And what better place to start than right here at the beautiful AFL stand. And I'm here with Ryan O'Sullivan, Commercial Sales Director. Thanks for joining us here on uh, FNTV. Yeah, no, happy to be here and thanks for having me. Absolutely. Let me start tough question here. I've heard people want to talk about it. Others don't want to even hear the name of Bede. Can you tell me what's going on? What what are we seeing in the market when it comes to bead uh, rollouts? Yeah, bead's a lot of uncertainty right now. Um, I think it comes from a few directions. Obviously, when you have a program that was started by a previous administration and you have an administration change six months ago, uh, that immediately throws some uncertainty into it. That's led to technology questions, You know, whether it be fiber versus LEO satellites and, and kind of how that's going to go. Uh, but also you throw in tariffs and things like that happening in the market along with it. And what you've seen is, is delays of funding rolling out um, and, and a lot of uncertainty that has maybe tampered down the optimism a little bit. I think there's still uh, a lot of optimism that it'll come through. But every time you get a 90 day delay, it begins to be, uh, you know, what's going to happen and is this going to happen? So I, I think the word is uncertainty for it. Sure. And you mentioned tariffs. And I did want to ask you about that. Uh, talk about uncertainty, right? There's been a lot of changes in policy, a lot of uh, back and forth. Have you seen any impact? What can you tell us about what you're seeing out there? I think it's a distraction. It's uh, because there have been so many roll out and so many roll back and roll out and roll back. It's just kind of been uh, been everywhere. Uh, for manufacturers, we've had to really kind of take our time to learn each iteration of these tariffs. And when we're doing that, it's distracting us from trying to prepare for things like major fiber rollouts, bead, uh, you know, even taking away some from, from what's going on in AI and other parts of the business. So anytime you have that, you have the potential to drive a project cost up. So uh, the, amount of, uh, the amount of money for a feasibility study that was set aside for it may change. And uh, that just feeds back to the overall uncertainty of, of kind of what's been going on in the, in the market, I'd say the last 90 to 180 days. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm sure it feels very long, much longer than that for many folks, but that's a great point. Let me get back to fiber then specifically yeah. and, and really, you know, a lot of what you're showing here at your stand. Um, obviously, we've talked a lot about broadband to the home and, and that's a big topic, but I'm also hearing a lot about new applications or, or you know, more interest around fiber and other applications outside of the home and outside of, yeah. of that residential and enterprise broadband. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, major driver in the market right now for fiber specifically, and, and, and we really believe fiber is the backbone for whether it be fiber to the home, whether it be what's going on with uh, grid modernization, hyperscale AI, um, fiber is the driver for that. But what we've seen is a, is a major growth with the AI hyperscale investments that's fiber centric. So the amount of data that are going through those applications are extremely large. And so uh, if you're a manufacturer and you've been able to pivot from fiber to the home to AI during this time of uncertainty, you're in a great spot. Now that doesn't really help you if you're a tier three uh, service provider, or if you're an electric co-op trying to figure out how you're going to move forward with your plan. So the fiber industry as a whole has been propped up by some of these other things going on in the market, like grid mod, like AI, um, which, are, which are fiber centric, but that's not always helpful for uh, a lot of companies that have added staff, um, spent a lot of time ramping up for deployments that have been delayed. And, and hopefully it's just delayed, but uh, yeah. but, but that's been um, a struggle for them, but an ability for some in the industry to pivot. Yeah. And let me close out then looking ahead. Obviously, it might be some of these trends you mentioned there. Tough question because we've talked about the uncertainty that's happening and yeah. the distractions going on. But where do you see the industry heading and, and you know, what's a thought maybe to leave our, our viewers with? Here? I think a few. I think um, one is is you're seeing a little bit more consolidation right now. You're seeing it with uh, with manufacturers, but there's also a lot of talk. It's even at the show this week about, um, you know, there's so many service providers out there that the market's kind of ripe for some consolidation. So I think you could see that. I think, uh, you know, what we hope to see uh, over the next three months, six months is really just kind of a finality of what BEAT is going to mean to the market. And um, hopefully it means we're moving forward with uh, fiber as the leading technology and the money's going to continue to roll out. Um, but the sooner the better on that. But I think at the end of the day, you know, for the future of fiber, it's in a great place because you've got grid modernization happening. That's the backbone of a lot of this that is going to be fiber centric. You've got hyperscale AI growth is fiber centric and you're going to continue to have broadband growth. There's still a whole lot of unserved and underserved areas that require fiber. So while there is a there is an atmosphere of uncertainty, there's a lot of good going on too. Great. Well, we have all that to look forward to. Brian, thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. We've come early in the morning, so we catch you. been a busy guy. I'm sure busy uh, day ahead. So thanks again for having us here on your Thank stand. you so much. It's been great.